Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel. And yes, these have officially been released today. The most expected update to the Garmin Edge cycling GPS units in a very, very long time. Over the last two weeks, I've been riding with the Edge 840 Solar, getting to know the ins and outs. So in today's video, I'll be covering off the key points of what's new with these new devices. I'll be looking at the differences in all the four new models. I put the claims of easy setup and more accurate GPS to the test. And I explain why Climb Pro's drawing giant uh, that's a whole other video in itself, which I've just released as well. Links below to that with the new Climb Pro Ascent Planner, which I call the hero feature of these new units. Coming out for the 540, 840, and the 1040 series today. All right, on to the details of what's new. Now, four new models, 540, 540 Solar, 840, and 840 Solar, all coming with USB-C. They have dual frequency or multi-band GPS, or GNSS. They have an improved battery runtime of a claim up to 32 hours. The Edge 840 series has button control along the sides as well. We'll have a closer look at this in just a few moments. There's solar charging, obviously, in the solar models. They have replaceable mount tabs on the back, and they have a wider form factor. On the software side of things, they do come with the new X40 or the 1040 user interface, which we've seen on the 1040, and the Edge Explorer 2. Also comes with simple setup, adaptive coaching, real-time stamina, power guide. There's a new Climb Explore widget, which will scan your local area for roads that go up and give you some statistics about those and will also route you to the base of those climbs if you like. And as mentioned, it does come with the new Climb Pro Ascent Planner, which is a horrible name for Climb Pro in Freeride. There's no need to follow a predefined route for the Climb Pro information to pop up on screen. As mentioned, I've got a whole other video on that. I think it's super cool. Links below to that. So that's a quick list of what's new and definitely not an extensive list of everything these units can do. That would take all day. But I can confirm these new Garmin Edge units build on existing features and functionality of previous models and other models such as the 1040. So you've got AMP Plus support, Bluetooth sensors, live track, spectator messaging, music widget controls, etc. On to what's not so new, and unfortunately the screen resolution remains the same. Same screen size, same screen resolution as the 830 and the 530 series from four years ago. Listed there, the Edge 540 and 840 come with a 2.6 inch screen, 246 by 322. And as a comparison there, the Edge 1030 and 1040 is coming with 282 by 470. If the 540 and 840 look a little larger in screen size, it's an optical illusion with that wider bezel on it. Edge 540 versus Edge 840, what are the actual differences? Well, the 540 obviously has no touch screen, but the 540 also only has half the amount of storage, coming in at 16 gigabytes of storage, with the 840 series coming in at 32. Now, over on the 1040 series, there were differences with the non-solar being 32 gig and the solar version being 64 gig. So do be aware if you're buying the 540 device, you've only got half the storage and you have no ability to do address search or on-device course creation. This is likely a similar scenario to the 530 where the base map information on those units didn't have addresses or point of interest information. Pricing and what you need to know with these units is you're paying $50 more for the base units than the previous models and you're paying an extra $100 US for the solar models. So the Edge 540 there coming at 349 all the way up to the Edge 840 Solar coming in at 549 or 550 US dollars. Comparisons there from the previous models, 530, 830, and also the current model 1040 and 1040 Solar. Again, with the 1040 Solar being $100 up on the base model of that unit. Fast tracking the unboxing today, which I've already done. So let's run through what was in the box. Out front mount, standard set of stem mounts and O-rings, USB-C cable and a tether. All things we've come to expect from Garmin with new units. Speaking of new units, here we are, the Edge 840 Solar. First thing of note when pulling this out of the box is, yes, it is a little wider. It measures out to around five millimeters wider than the Edge 830. I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison in just one moment. We have three buttons down this side, two buttons this side, two buttons underneath, meaning that this interface can be used with either buttons or the touchscreen. USB-C port on the bottom there. Good to see they're finally upgraded. And we have replaceable quarter turn tabs. Now they come off with two little screws underneath, like so. Now the side-by-side -side comparison with the Edge 830, and the screen on this does look a little bigger than this. This definitely is a little brighter. This has the solar panel across the top of the screen. Outdoors didn't make too much of a difference whatsoever in my experience, but the screen sizes are identical in both width and height. Now physically, the units are both the same height. The Edge 840 coming in at about five millimeters wider measuring there, just by eye around 57 mil. And the older 840 measuring at around 51 to 52 mil. Height wise, 
or thickness, the Edge 840 is about 1.5 millimeters thinner than the older Edge 830. So they're the big physical changes with the newer unit here, bringing in the Edge 1040 Solar. And it's quite obvious straight away that this is pretty much a shorty version of the Edge 1040 Solar. As expected, we are seeing the new interface on this unit here, as we've seen with the Edge 1040 Solar and the Edge Explore 2, with things like glances added to the homepage and a few other minor differences. If you're coming over from an older unit, it'll take you a few minutes to get used to the new layout, but I have warmed to how things operate with the new interface. Over to the all important weigh-in, starting off with the Edge 830 as our baseline, coming in at 82 grams. Onto the, what appears to be heavier, visually, oh, oh, 89 grams for the Edge 840 Solar. And as a reference point here, the Edge 1040 Solar coming in at 134 grams. So really not much between these two. This looks a good 20 or so grams heavier. It's actually not, it's only about eight or so grams in it. Setup and configuration took around two minutes thanks to the activity profile syncing from other devices via Garmin Connect. Now this unit is codenamed Moon S prior to release and there is a single Bluetooth pairing which makes things well, a lot more robust in my experience. Okay, that has connected. Next on that, this won't be my primary training device. Okay, it's synced all my current sensors over and then I get to choose which unit I wanna copy all my profiles from. So I'll go the Edge 1040 Solar and it will copy all my activity profiles and pages and set up. We'll hit sync. And that's all good to go. Okay, it'll take me through a tutorial of a few of the new features. And there are a few additional things that won't be synced over, including the Wi-Fi password. So I'll have to select my Wi-Fi network. That is Alpaca Labs 5G, hit connect, enter the password, and the unit will connect. Now, if you've been watching the clock on the iPhone, you'll see it is only about, well, it's less than two minutes. Okay, live track can also be set up in this unit. Expect that a messaging there, one of the new features. Came out not too long ago, solar charging. There's some information there from, well, earlier today when I was indoors. <laughs> and that's good to go. Look, it's simple as that for the setup. And from here, all my pages are there and ready to roll. Another feature of Garmin Connect Mobile and these new devices is the ability to configure activity profiles from within your mobile device itself. So if you like to dance with the devil and deal with this configuration here, you can add all of your fields and the layout there. Now for me, this is a little confusing. Configuration on the head unit itself just seems to be a little bit more intuitive, but if you want to configure things on your mobile device rather than on the unit, it is all there. You can see my setup here of the different screen layouts. Be nice for those to be graphical though, to uh, see what you're configuring before pushing it over to the unit. But it is there, little hidden feature over there in Garmin Connect. Quickly reviewing the GPS or the tracking accuracy of the 840. And we have a lack of tall buildings in Ballarat, so I'll do the next best thing. A lot of tall trees. Here's a cross country route through here that I've ridden. The 830 is in green. The 840 with its multi-GNSS, multi-band chipset is in purple. And that purple is tracking just a little bit closer to reality. You can see here, 830 going off into the trees, where the 840 is tracking me just a little better. Now in Ballarat, we also have a mountain bike park in town that I detoured via on the way home. I'll scroll in here. And again, not quite a tall building test, but quite a few tall trees. And the purple, the 840, is just tracking a little bit tighter, a little bit closer to reality for the most part of that cross country track. And the 830, just struggling a little bit, putting me off into the trees through here. So the 830 is not too bad, but the 840 is just that little bit better at position and tracking accuracy. Overall, my experience with the 840 Solar has been very positive. I was familiar with the user interface, given it's just simply a baby 1040 Solar, so there was no learning curve for me there. Uh, the setup, as you saw in the video there, super quick. It brought all my profiles and all my sensors over. I did have one ride where the power meter was dropping out horribly. I queried Garmin on this one. They asked if I had screen record on at the same time. Yes, I did. That may have been causing the issue, so I'll keep a close eye on that. 
I use a lot of Connect IQ data fields and widgets. I can't report on any of those working on this because none of them have been compiled for this yet. So stay tuned on that. And look, to be honest, overall, there was nothing unexpected in using this device other than that Climb Pro Ascent Planner, which I absolutely love. I've mentioned there's a whole video on that one that I've released just now too. Other issues with this device, on first ride, it did reboot halfway through the ride and recover from that crash. There's since been a few firmware updates released and I haven't had that happen. Um, when I also first powered the unit on, now this is a media release unit, so I need to report on what I get. The unit did bring over some of the user interface bugs that I saw on the 1040. One of those has been patched two days ago, so Garmin are pushing right up to this release date to try and iron a few things out on this. Other than that, a relatively smooth sailing experience. To answer the most common question that pops up when new devices like this are released, and that is, should you upgrade? The best answer I can give on that is, well, it depends. It depends on what you currently have, what features you want, and do you want to be an early adopter? A little more on being an early adopter. I'm gonna change my tune on this one. Typically, I'm a jump in the deep end, the water's fine too. Maybe hold off six to eight weeks on this unit. Let the early adopters do all the hard work. Let them report all the issues back to Garmin. Let Garmin roll out an update or two and then see where it lands. Now I'm basing this on the history or the history that I have with the Edge 1040 Solar. This unit worked fine for me out in the road. Didn't have many issues at all. When it started rolling out to thousands and thousands of people, a few things popped up that people noticed and I had a closer look and yeah, there was a few small things that unit wasn't quite doing well upon release. I suspect this will be the same, so my suggestion is just hold out a few weeks, unless you just want to cowboy it, grab the new unit and go for it. If you've got a 538, 1030 30 Plus, it'd be hard to recommend one of these devices. Those units do the core functionalities very, very well of what they do. But if you have a 520, 820, or maybe an older 1030, that thing's getting a bit slow now in the menus, and you want to stay within the Garmin ecosystem, these would definitely be worth a look. If you are looking at upgrading to the 540, 840 or 1040 series simply for the Climb Pro Ascent Planner, I suggest you hold on to your chevrons just a few more weeks. I know Wahoo have something in the works and they have something that both Garmin or Hammerhead don't have with their implementation of Climb Pro anywhere, anytime. So stay tuned for more on that soon. Okay, final thoughts on this one, what this unit should be, what it could be, what it might be in the future. And look, to be honest, some real speak on this one, there's nothing revolutionary with these new units. I do think Garmin have met consumer expectations in what I would call a minimal way. Another list, because I love lists. Uh, USB-C, that's great, but it is a nine-year-old standard now. They have released with the same screen size and resolution as four years ago on the 530 and the 830 unit, so no progress being made there. They have done an update to Climb Pro, which I absolutely love, but Climb Pro is now four years old. It is a feature that people have wanted for four years, and it is a feature that uh, Hammerhead have been doing, or Crew have been doing for over a year now, and that Wahoo will be doing very well in the near future. The better GPS, position tracking with the multi-band, multi-GNSS, that is a good tick box to have, but that is expected. And global mapping, that is great to have if you're traveling, but you still need to do that over a USB cable and plugging into a Mac or a PC. So just some ideas off the top of my head of what I'd love to have seen these units be, or what they should be in the future. That should be bezel free from screens, edge to edge, side to side, wireless charging, eSIM capabilities with mobile data, bypassing the restriction we have at the moment with Apple and their two-way messaging, that's a whole other can of worms. Storage space, 16 gig, 32 gig, that's very, very small in 2023. I think they should standardize on 128 gig across the board and just be done with it. Connect IQ apps and data fields, that would be great if they didn't need specific compilation for every single model. So to simplify things there, if things working out of the box straight away, look, it's gonna be weeks, days, or months for a lot of Connect IQ apps or data fields or widgets to actually work on these new devices. So how these devices perform with how you use the devices is gonna be an unknown until those things are compiled. Next up, Apple Find My technology is being introduced into more and more third-party devices. I would love to see these little units here be on the Apple Find My network. If not to find your bike, then just simply to find this device as a bit more security. So if someone takes it off your bike, you'll have a fighting chance of finding out where it is. And finally, map management over Wi-Fi rather than via a cable. That would be absolutely brilliant. If you're traveling around and having to take a Mac or a PC and a wire to find your maps, that's clunky. It'd be great if you could just update the maps via Wi-Fi on these units. But that is not the case in 2023. Look, the one thing to be grateful for though, I guess, is the Edge units come in only three flavors, large, medium, and small. If you're talking about wearables and Garmin watches, trying to figure out which of the 5,000 models is for you is an absolute nightmare. At least with the bike computers, big and medium, we have the choice of uh, solar, touchscreen, and mapping. And on the small side of things, well, that's just small. That doesn't actually do much at all.
Look, I really hope in four years time, we're not seeing the 550 and the 850 come out with small incremental hardware updates, masked with a number of software updates that a lot of us just don't use. Now, a lot of what I put on my wish list of what I hope to see these units be, pretty much explains what a mobile phone is. And we are seeing a convergence of those two technologies. Bike computers and mobile phones are becoming very, very similar devices. So if this is the cycling hardware that Garmin are banking on for the next three to four years, I'm thinking they may now be in a very, very vulnerable position for another company to come and just leapfrog them with technology. Are we seeing Garmin become the Nokia of bike computers? Hmm, interesting discussion for another day. All right, and with that, we'll leave it there for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and enjoyed the discussion there at the end about what these devices could be and should be. If you've enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel and be alerted of new videos. And now if you haven't seen it, jump over and watch my other video on the Climb Pro Ascent Planner, where I take it on-road, off-road and on gravel, which is a mixture of both. All right, we'll see you soon.